Stop recording, Glenn. That okay, Glenn. Great, and welcome everybody. It's a new Motivic Geometry seminar, and today I'm pleased to introduce Nils Feld, who will talk about Milner Witt homotopy sheaves and Morel's generalized transfers. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for the uh, invitation. Thank you, Polan. So um, I would like to present you some new results uh, about homotopy shares and uh, transfers. So um, first of all, some historical remarks. Um, so the word transfers um, means many things in mathematics. And uh, well, in motivic homotopy theory, I guess the most uh, known one is the transfers from uh, Wojewodzki. Um, and later studied by Sislane, Friedlander, and uh, others. Um, Wojewodzki transfers uh, has had two children at least, uh, mainly Milnovit transfers and uh, frame transfers. So defined by Kalmes, Fazel, Deglis, uh, Esbar, uh, and Gagusha Panin. So, Sorry, uh, can I interrupt you? I would add Wojewodzki uh, inside brackets across frame transfers, if you don't mind. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so it was... Yeah, uh, ju ju just a side remark, sorry. Yeah. So it was from unpublished uh, notes from uh, Wojewodzki uh, that Gagusian Pan defined uh, frame transfers, if I'm, I'm not mistaken. So... Uh, we'll start with some recollection about homotopy shifts. And uh, I will give you the definition uh, of uh, uh, morale transfers or bas state transfers or cohomological transfers. And I will state um, a conjecture of morale. Uh, then I will define uh, homotopy shifts with uh, generalized transfers. And I will try to give you uh, some applications of this uh, new point of view. So um, first of all, um, I will work only over a perfect base field K. And um, well, moreover, I, I need to assume that K is infinite uh, of characteristic not two. I must confess that I'm not really pleased with this uh, assumption, but we can discuss it uh, later. But for now, I work over K. So record some definitions of morale. Um, a shift uh, of groups over the category of smooth schemes uh, is uh, strongly a one invariant if it's uh, Nisnevit cohomology in degree zero and one uh, is, well, uh, a one invariant. And uh, if we work with abelian groups, uh, which I do, um, a shift is said to be strictly a one invariant if um, it's uh, this Nevit cohomology in all degrees uh, is um, a one invariant. So Morel proved that uh, these two definitions are uh, these two definitions are equivalent if you work with the abelian groups. So the idea is. Um, well, Morel defined what he called uh, what, Rochmit complex. I will uh, talk a bit, uh, about it a bit later, but basically um, Morel defined a, a complex that computes um, this Nevich cohomology for this kind of shapes. And Morel proved that uh, the Rochmit complex is a one invariant. And that's basically how you prove that these two definitions are well equivalent if you work with uh, abelian groups. All right, so we work with uh, shifts of the category of smooth schemes, but uh, well, at least for me, it's better to work with uh, fields over K. So FK is the category of uh, finitely generated fields over K. And Borel define uh, what he call a strongly unramified datum, which is basically a functor defined over the category of fields over K. We assume that it is continuous, so 
basically it means that it preserve, uh, preserves um, filtering collimates of finite type fields. Um, for any evaluation, we need uh, a subgroup corresponding to this valuation. And uh, there is a specialization map uh, for each uh, valuation. So there is a bunch of axioms that basically say that everything works to together. And um, well, I should mention that we do have an axiom for A1 invariance. So we want this uh, strongly ramified datum to be a one invariant. So why do we do this? So the idea is the following. Um, it is better to work with uh, fields instead of uh, smooth skins. It's easier at least. And Morel proved that uh, we do have an equivalence of categories between um, strongly one invariant shifts of groups. And uh, well, and ramify data. So the idea is that uh, if you consider a functor and uh, unramify data defined over the category of fields, you can extend it uh, to the category of smooth schemes. So if you consider X uh, as smooth schemes, you may assume that it is uh, irreducible. And then you can consider uh, the intersection of all points of co dimension one uh, and uh, well, that's so. That's how you, you define the MX for a strongly unramified atom, and you can prove that uh, this defines a an equivalence of category. So, um, well, in the in the rest of the talk, I will work only with abelian groups, and uh, so strongly and strictly when invariant in the same thing, and uh, I will called such shifts uh, a homotopy shift. So this is well known, I think. Um, HI is the category of uh, homotopy shifts. And uh, well, you can prove that it is equivalent to the heart of the stable homotopy category for its uh, homotopy destructor. OK, so I work with homotopy shifts. And uh, well, I would like to have a bit uh, more structure on uh, on M. So we can define what we call uh, the contraction of M, so M minus one. So basically, if you consider a smooth scheme over K, um, you have the evolution map. And uh, if you take the co-kernel of this map, uh, this defines you the A minus one, the contraction. You can prove that it is again a homotopy shift, but uh, it is a, li a little bit more. So first of all, uh, so m minus one of x, uh, this is a direct sum of uh, m g m x. So you do have a a, a short equ exact sequence with uh, m x into uh, m g m x onto m minus one uh, x. So you can define a GW module structure thanks to GM. And uh, moreover, you can you you have uh, residue maps for um, any variations like this. So so first annotation here. Um, you can every time you you have a GW module structure on a shift, you can um, twist it by a line bundle. So in this case, it is the determinant of the cotogen complex. And um, so basically you tensor your, your group with the free abelian groups uh, generated by the uh, um, invisible element of uh, the line bundle. And you do need the uh, GW module action to define this uh, tensor product. So for instance, if you consider M equal to, equals to the Milner bit K theory, uh, for, you can choose a uniformizing element, so a prime uh, for the evaluation V. And this defines you uh, a residue map, just like, uh, I mean, for Milner K theory, you can define a residue map like this uh, without the need to twist 
but uh, the thing is the map will depend on uh, the prime that you choose for the evaluation. So that's why we do need to twist uh, our residue in order to, to have a well-defined map like this. Okay, so um, now um, I'll define what I call bus state transfer. Um, well, this is the definition of morale and uh, he called uh, this uh, kind of maps, uh, cohomological transfers or sometimes uh, geometrical transfers, depending on what you mean. Um, so the, the definition is exactly the same that Bass and Tate gave for mean law K theory, so in the 70s. So that's why I, I call it Bass state transfer. So the idea is the following. If you consider M a homotopy shift, morale proof that you have a short exact sequence like this. And uh, well, if you consider a finite monogenic uh, field extension, uh, X, a generator, uh, corresponds to a point of co-dimension one in this uh, line bond, uh, affine line. So if you want a map from A minus one of EX to A minus one of E, so what you do is, uh, you can consider an element in the uh, inverse image, and then you go, uh, you use the uh, um, valuation at infinity. So you obtain an element in the uh, minor, uh, M minus one of E, and then you add a minus one in the definition because, of, well, mainly we want to have some kind of reciprocity formula for curves. And uh, well, this is exactly the same definition that uh, Bass and Tate gave for Milnarka theory. So once you know how to define transfers for monogenic uh, extensions, then you can naturally extend the definition for any finite extension. So if you choose a generic system x1, x2, xr over e, uh, then you, you have a uh, subfields of uh, monogenic extensions and you just take the composite of all uh, transfers and uh, this, this is how you define the transfer map for any finite extension. So like I said, this is what um, Basentide did for Milner K3 in the, in the 70s. And while the big question was, uh, does it depend on any choice? And uh, the question was, well, highly non-trivial even for Milner K theory at the time. And it was proved only much, much later by Cato. And uh, well, basically Morel uh, uh, remarked that this result should also uh, hold for A minus one. So for any one fold contraction of a homotopy shift, we would like to, to have well-defined uh, transfers. Um, so in his book, Morel uh, proved that it was true if you consider A minus two, A minus two. But the proof, uh, well, for the proof, Morel uh, works with uh, cohomology in degree two of the um, uh, projective line. And uh, well, the proof does not extend to uh, just a minus one. So I try to prove this result in full generality. And uh, well, for now I can only uh, give you some uh, special cases. So first, my first instinct was to, was to um, well try to scavenge the proof of Cato for Milner K theory. So we know that it is true for Milner K theory in full generality. So why not try the proof of Cato? Well, obviously, um, Cato's proof is highly uh, technical and, uh, well, it does not extend that, uh, well, it does not work for any homotopy shape. Uh, but, but still, uh, you can see that uh, if you prove the conjecture for some subclass of fields, then the conjecture is true uh, for E. So here P is a prime number. And what is called P primary field uh, is a field that has um, uh, 
no finite extension prime to p, so no non-trivial non finite extension prime to p. And uh, in order to prove this, you you need some kind of Bezu theorem. So when I say Bezu, I mean uh, you know in uh, arithmetic you have a theorem that states that uh, if you have um, two co-prime natural numbers uh, that divides a third one, then the third one number must be one. While well, you do have some similar result for quadratic forms, and that's how you can prove this uh, uh, item number two. And moreover, you can prove that uh, if M is a homotopy shift with Milnovic transfers, so this is the category defined by uh, Kalmes, Fazel, and uh, others. Well, you can prove that uh, transfers are well defined and uh, um, and functorial. So I would like also to present another special case. So if you consider M a homotopy shift and you tensor uh, your shift by Q, so basically you leave out any torsions. Well, in this case, the moral conjecture is true. Uh, so MQ minus one uh, has functorial best state transfers. So I will try to explain briefly uh, the proof. Um, just for simplification, uh, I will assume that M is um, um, the Milnocker theory. So like I said before, we know that uh, Milnocker theory uh, do have transfers in full generality uh, without the need to tensor by Q. But for the sake of the argument, I will assume that uh, we don't know that yet. So I will try to prove, uh, to give you a more simpler proof. So just recall that uh, the Milnocker theory of a field is just the tensor algebra of F star modulo uh, the Steinbein relation. So the, for the proof, we have uh, three steps. So for the first one, I will uh, explain right away why do I need to tensor my shifts uh, with the rational numbers. So basically, we want the restriction maps, maps to be um, injective. Uh, when I say restriction, I mean, uh, so for Milner theory, this is the most obvious map. So you take Galois symbols and you send it to its natural uh, image. And um, for shift, uh, I mean, this is just a pullback. And we can prove that this map uh, is injective. And for this, well, you take an element in the kernel, then you take it back to the smaller group uh, by looking at the, the transfer. So this transfer map uh, may depend on a choice of uh, generator, but in this case, this well does not matter. The result is always zero. Uh, we do have a production formula uh, because our, our construction are well linear. So this means that any element X in the kernel is scaled by the transfer of, uh, of one. And uh, we would like to inverse this element. And in general, this is not true. But uh, well, that's why I tensored my shifts by Q because uh, so we know that X is uh, a torsion element. But if you assume that we have no torsion, then X must be zero. And well, the map must be injective. Sorry, can I interrupt you? Uh, yeah. Excuse me. Yeah, I suspect that in characteristic P, you don't need to tensor with all rational numbers, but uh, it is enough to invert all primes except uh, the prime characteristic P. Um. Yeah, it's just, uh, well, a side remark. Yeah, sure. Well, this argument is basically the uh, well, it's similar to the one when I 
uh, I've talked to the uh, item number two with uh, P primary fails and uh, uh, well, you can do better than just inverse everything, but uh, yes. So then uh, the second step is a bit scary. Uh, so the idea is just that, um, um, well, transfers and uh, restriction maps, well, commutes uh, altogether. So the idea is that uh, if you have a, a Cartesian square of um, schemes, then you can apply your shift and uh, you obtain that, well, uh, in some sense, pullbacks, uh, so pullbacks and push forwards uh, commutes. And uh, so this is sometimes called a, a base chain property or something like that. And well, in our case, you can apply this previous uh, result and uh, you can see that if you consider two generative systems, x1, x2, xr, and y1, y2, ys, then you can see that, uh, well, the two transfers are equal up to some restriction maps. And since we work with rational coefficients, then you can see that uh, the restriction is injective, hence the two maps must, must be equal. Thus, we do have uh, the conjecture in uh, for rational coefficients. So I hope it serves as a some kind of introduction to this definition. So like I said, uh, well, there is many uh, definitions for transfers. And um, in 2011, Morel uh, define what he called generalized transfers, which is some kind of uh, axiomatic of um, well transfers. And so my definition here is slightly different from Morel's, but uh, the idea is uh, basically the same. So if you consider M a homotopy shift, then uh, we see that it has uh, has a structure of generic transfers. Uh, first, we need a GW, uh, GW module structure. And first of all, uh, well, we need also uh, transfers, obviously. So for any finite extension, we do have transfers like that. Um, and there is some other axiom that makes everything work together. But the main axiom is that uh, the transfers are functorial. So like we've seen with Bastet transfer, uh, this assumption is, well, not trivial at all. But for the definition, we do assume that. Um, so the idea is the following. Uh, M is a shift, and we have four kind of different uh, data defined on M. So first of all, we have, uh, well, this is a shift, so we have pullbacks. And this is what I call sometimes uh, restriction. So when I work with fields, this is basically the restrictions. The second uh, kind of maps what, that we have is, uh, well, we have the transfers. So this is some kind of push forwards. The third uh, datum is the, we have a GW model structure. And the fourth is that we have uh, residue maps from M to M minus one, et cetera. So basically the axiom for this definition is that uh, these four uh, different data uh, commutes are well together and uh, everything is natural. Um, so the idea that, um, well, I get this definition because um, I've, I've I studied uh, Rust cycle modules. So in the 90s, Rust uh, defined what he called cycle modules, which are some kind uh, of uh, functors with uh, four kind of different data. There, there is restriction, co-restriction, which are the transfers, and there is an action uh, of Milner K3. So not GW, but uh, Milner K3. And there, there is residue maps. And um, well, Rust defined this and uh, 
And we can prove that thanks to uh, the work of Degley that uh, Rust cycle modules are equivalent to uh, homotopy modules. So when I say homot homotopy modules, uh, I mean a family of homotopy shifts. So a Z graded homotopy shift um, with some kind of uh, compatibility axioms. And we can prove that Rust cycle modules are equivalent to uh, homotopy, homotopy modules with uh, Wojcicki transfers. And uh, well, you can define uh, a similar uh, object. Uh, you can define what we call uh, Milner bit cycle modules, which are basically like Ross cycle modules, but with uh, some kind of uh, quality information. And you can prove that uh, Milner bit cycle modules are equivalent to uh, SH, so the, the heart of SH, so the homotopy modules. Um, so uh, this is kind of stable result. And uh, with this definition, I wanted to study a more effective version of these uh, cycle modules. So that's why we do, I present it like this. And uh, so we have a bunch of examples. Um, so you can see that uh, Milnovit K theory is, um, well, a homotopy shift with general transfers. And if you take n equals to zero, you obtain the quadratic bit uh, uh, quadratic forms. Uh, like I said, functoriality is the, the hardest axiom to prove, um, which basically amounts to say that uh, best state transfers are functorial. So um, if you assume that uh, moral conjecture is true, then you can see that n minus one has a, a structure of general transfers. But for now, I, I only know that uh, what conjecture is true for A minus two and MQ minus one. So that's all I can say for now. Okay, so what can I say about uh, homotopy shifts with uh, generalized transfers? So first of all, I can define a Rushmid complex as usual. So this is, uh, so for any smooth scheme, you can define uh, the complex in cohomology called degrees N, which is the, well, as usual, this is the sum of our uh, co-dimension one, uh, co-dimension N uh, points uh, and N minus uh, N terms. We do need to, we need to twist for, well, for some reasons. Um, and in our case, uh, since, uh, like I said, M has four kind of different data, uh, you can see that uh, our rush mid complex also has four kind of different data. So pullbacks, push forwards, uh, G-redirection and boundary maps. So I'm going to detail just the definition of the differential maps. So. I guess this is well known. This is the, um, the same definition that Morel gave for the usual Rushmid complex. And uh, this is also the same definition that Rust gave for uh, cycle modules. So I guess this is well known. Um, well, the idea that uh, if you take two points, uh, since by definition, the complex is just a sum of uh, M minus N terms, you define the differential term by, by terms and um, well the idea is that uh, you can take the normalization in order to have to use the residue maps and uh, the main idea is that you do need to use transfers uh, if you want to have a well-defined um, differential um, so this is a bit new. Um, so in general, for homotopy shifts without transfers, we do not we do not have a uh, push forwards map uh, in general. But since uh, our shift uh, here has transfers, well, you can define uh, so like I said, term by terms, and uh, every time you have a finite extension, you can um, define the push forward to be the transfer map and otherwise it is zero. 
Um, and finally, um, so with this uh, new Rush bit complex, uh, I can look at its um, cohomology in degree zero. So if you consider M a homotopy shift with generalized transfers, and for any smooth schemes X, I can look at the cohomology in degree zero, so the, the A0. I do need to twist uh, our shift for some reason because I want things to be functorial, but this is not really important for the talk. What's important is that uh, this defines a new shift. So there is some slight uh, abuse of notation, but uh, the functor that, that uh, you take x and you associate this group, this defines a new shift. And you can see that uh, it is again a homotopy shift. And moreover, uh, well, it has uh, mean of it transfers. And uh, well, you can prove that uh, this functor uh, in, is in fact an, an equivalence of categories. So basically, uh, mean lovit transfers are equivalent to general transfers. And uh, just to sum up the results, um, so when you work with uh, Homotopy shifts, like I said in the beginning, you have many kinds of different transfers to consider. And uh, according to the work of Bauman, you can uh, prove that Milner with transfers and framed transfers are equivalent. And uh, so you have an equivalence between uh, general transfers and Milner with transfers and uh, framed transfers. All right, so up until now, I've given you a new definition of transfers and uh, I told you that it was equivalent to some well-known transfers. Um, so what can I do with this new point of view? Um, well, uh, originally I wanted to, to study this square of uh, adjunction. So HI is the category of homotopy shifts. HI MW is the category of homotopy shifts with Milnovit transfers. HM is the category of a homotopy module, uh, which are Z-graded homotopy shifts. Uh, and HM MW is uh, the category of homo uh, homotopy modules with uh, Milnovit transfers. And uh, so you can see that um, HM is the heart of uh, SH, so the stable homotopy category. HM MW is the heart of uh, DM tilde, uh, which is uh, Deglis Fazel Milnovit motivic complexes. And uh, on the left, you, you have, well, effective um, objects. So this is the heart of uh, the effective DM tilde. And uh, HI is the uh, heart of uh, SHS1, so the stable uh, homotopy category after uh, S1 stabilization. So on the left, you have stable objects, and on the right, uh, so on the right, you have stable object, and uh, on the left, you have, uh, well, effective objects. And uh, you can prove that uh, these two categories on the right are equivalent. So in order to do that, you can. Um, you can prove that uh, homotopy modules are described with uh, some kind of, uh, like I said, uh, mean of it cycle modules, and you can see that it is basically the same with or without transfers. Uh, sorry, but uh, sorry, yes. but isn't it uh, a theorem of Ananiski niche the, the, yes, uh, for the couple? Ah, okay. Yes, it exactly is. that. I see. I see. Yes, yes. So two years ago, Anja Niski and Ashitov proved that these two categories were equivalent. Uh, and they use uh, another technique with um, frame transfer, I, I believe. And uh, well, according to the work of Deglis Fadel, um, you can see that the, this functor from uh, 
uh, about the shifts with uh, Milnovich transfers um, is fully faithful. So um, I wanted to, to have some kind of similar result in the effective part of this uh, diagram. So my first instinct was to prove that um, the functor that forgets Milnovich transfers is um, fully faithful. Well, the problem is that uh, you can prove that it cannot be full. So, well, okay. Uh, well, I can describe its essential uh, image. So, this is what I did with uh, uh, generic transfers. So, if you consider a, a homotopy shift, then Milnovi transfers, generic transfers uh, are all equivalent and uh, you can prove that it means that uh, your shift is uh, a two-fold contraction of a homotopy shift. And moreover, if you assume that moral conjecture is true, then uh, you could say that uh, your shift is uh, a one-fold contraction of a homotopy shift. So in particular, this is always the case with rational coefficients. Yeah. I see. So um, I would like to present uh, another application uh, of this. So, well, classically, um, if you work in a, well, classical topology uh, homotopy theory, uh, you have this functor uh, that uh, sends a space to its singular chain complex, and you can prove that it is conservative uh, on simply connected spaces. Uh, when I say conservative, I mean that it reflects isomorphisms. And um, well, we do not have yet uh, such result for uh, in a motivicum context so from motivicum motivi theory. So basically, the the functor can be split into three. Um, so here you have the category of pointed and one invariant uh, linear bit shifts of uh, the category of smooth schemes. Uh, then you have S1 stabilization, P1 stabilization, and a uh, void skid category of, uh, of uh, motives. And uh, so the third functor here uh, was studied by Barman two years ago, and he proved that it was conservative in most cases. The first uh, functor here was studied by uh, Vickel Green and, uh, and Wilson. So three years ago, and they proved that uh, it is conservative on, uh, on uh, bonded below objects. And uh, well, it remains to study the puncture in the middle. And uh, the conjecture is as follows. So if you consider D a natural number, uh, then you can consider the category uh, generated by um, a GM suspension. And we would like to prove that uh, it is conservative um, for well, at least d equals one on bonded below uh, objects. And uh, so this conjecture was studied by Barman and Yekerson, and they proved that uh, in order to prove this, it suffices to, uh, to prove this conjecture. So this is what I call barman yekerson conjecture. So this is the true uh, conjecture. So here, SH uh, effective is the localizing subcategory generated by the uh, image of uh, SHS1 uh, in SH under infinite GM suspension. Uh, this category here was studied by uh, Elemento, um, Hoyowa, Kahn, Suslinos, and Jakarson, and I guess many others. 
and uh, we can prove that this category here uh, is uh, equivalent to so-called effective homotopy modules, or it is also equivalent to the category of uh, homotopy uh, shifts with uh, framed transfers. So with what I said before, it is equivalent to the homotopy shifts with uh, mid-nobit transfers or generalized transfers. And uh, well, we would like to prove that this is an equivalence of categories. Um, so first of all, we do need to assume that D is greater than one. Well, because for D equals zero, uh, uh, this is not true. You can find uh, homotopy shifts uh, with, without transfers, basically. And well, so this was uh, studied by Barman and Jacobson uh, two years ago. First, they proved that uh, the result was true for D greater than two in characteristic zero. Uh, this year, in last July, Barman proved that the conjecture was true uh, for D greater than three in all characteristic, um, expect, well, except that uh, I still do need uh, to assume that K, the base field, is uh, of characteristic different from two and uh, uh, and maybe infinite two, but that's not really important. And uh, well, according to the work of Barman, uh, you can see that moral conjecture uh, implies this uh, conjecture if you if you look at uh, best state transfers. And so, in particular, uh, for D greater than two. Uh, we do have the conjecture in full generality. So an application of this uh, conjecture is the following. Um, so the idea is that if you, so in, um, in classical topology, homotopy theory, if you consider a, well, a nice topological space, you can, uh, well, look at this sequence of uh, loop suspension, loop suspension. And, uh, well, the purpose is to take these collimates and uh, obtain some kind of stabilization. And, um, well, in classical topology, uh, we have a, what we call a Frodental theorem uh, that states that uh, this sequence uh, stabilizes uh, after a finite number of steps. So on the right, you have the uh, collimates, but you can see that, uh, you can prove that uh, after a finite number of steps, well, the sequence is stationary. And uh, we would like to have some similar results in uh, motivic homotopy theory. And um, well, for instance, if you look at the pi zero, uh, the pi zero, the pi zero, the pi zero of this sequence, uh, in classical topology, uh, what you have is, well, first you have the pi zero, and the first step, you have the three the abelian groups generated by pi zero. The second step is the three abelian groups uh, generated by uh, pi zero. And then it, uh, again, you have the free abelian groups generated by pi zero. So it is uh, an isomorphism after only two steps. And uh, well, you can prove that uh, if you consider, well, motivic spaces, uh, then uh, according to well, the conjecture of Barman Nicholson, you can see that uh, this is true for uh, after only two steps. So we do have uh, an isomorphism uh, like this uh, when you look at the pi zero. So the stabilization will stop after only two steps. And uh, well, I guess this is a quite a nice result. And uh, like I said, uh, this is kind of optimal because for D equals one, it can be true because you have basically, uh, well, non-abelian groups and uh, abelian groups. So, well, this is uh, optimal in this sense. Uh, 
well, thank you for your intention. And uh, if you have any questions, I will be happy to uh, answer them. Thanks a lot, Nils. Uh, round of applause for our speaker, please. Okay, so let's um, let's have a round of, of questions. Please go ahead. Um, Nils, maybe you can go back one slide. So maybe you can. Okay. Right. So the corollary, what is the assumption on the base in, the, in this corollary? Is it, is it any field that you have here? Uh, well, uh, I only work with the uh, field uh, of characteristic not two and uh, uh, non-finite non fields. So this kind of uh, disappointing assumptions that uh, for the, well, if you look at uh, the proof, I uh, don't really need the fact that uh, the base field is uh, of characteristic not two or infinite. I never really use this fact, except once um, in the proof, I do need um, uh, the concession theorem for Milnovit sheaves, proved by uh, Fazel and uh, Osbar. And um, and basically, I also need the well, the whole theory of well frame transfers and uh, Milnovit transfers, and uh, we do need for now to work with the characteristic uh, different from two. But uh, well, first of all, you we would like to to get rid of the assumption of uh, infinite fields because. Uh, at the time, it was used um, by Morel because he needed uh, some kind of um, um, Gaber, Gaber's lemma. And uh, at the time, it was only true for infinite fields. But nowadays, we know that it is true for finite fields. So I guess maybe we could uh, include finite fields. And uh, also, uh, if you work with uh, Milner bit theory and such, uh, it should work in characteristic two. But uh, well, for now, the main theory uh, of frame transfers and uh, Milner bit transfers are all based on uh, characteristic not two, but uh, there is still hope. So I have a question. This is labeled a corollary, but as I was following it, it seems to be a corollary to the conjecture of bachmann yackerson or what is it a corollary to? This is a corollary of the uh, bachmann yackerson conjecture. So this is basically uh, uh, proved by, by Bachmann. And uh, so Bachmann proved for D equals three, but uh, according to what I did before, this is also true for D equals two. And in the Freudenthal suspension theorem, it doesn't it doesn't depend on any properties of the motivic space X. Usual usual Freudenthal, the suspension theorem has something about the dimension of number of cells of X or something. I don't think so. I'm not sure. But uh, I think this is true for any point in motivic space. Hey, thanks. thanks. Any other questions? <laughs> okay, last chance. Doesn't seem to be the case then. Let's all thank Anils again for a very nice talk. Thank you again.